okay so then how do you think like from your perspective besides relaxation right and using relaxation or maybe potentially creativity using uh mediated touch what other like most promising maybe use cases uh, where you see mediated touch beneficial for humankind yeah i mean i think for me i think we're we're, we're already seeing some examples of this so um one example i think is in terms of safety actually so i think increasingly you're seeing touch technology being shown to be an incredibly important part of making certain activities in the world a safer place so for instance let's say bomb disposal and that's a really specific example mm -hmm. but, but there's work showing that now you can send in the robots and you can do work with that kind of um, that that technology to try to you know effectively deactivate move the bomb away um, but one of the keys for that to work is it's sending haptic feedback to the operator and they're feeling vibrations and those vibrations are really important to that type of experience mm -hmm. or give them more maybe daily experience that we might might become more common for a lot of us is increasingly you're seeing more things like these remote um medical procedures right so you can now have a situation where you know you can have a surgeon doing a procedure from miles away controlling a robot that's doing it and it mm -hmm. needs to be guided and a really important part of making sure that's safe is making sure there is haptic feedback going to the surgeon right so they need mm -hmm. to feel and get that and that comes so i think that side of things is going to be a really important area moving forward I arguably think it already is an important part of where we're at for me I also think as I mean as, as someone who works on social relationships and someone who works social well-being and health and that side of things I think I think there's a really important place for digital touch whether that's from a robot whether that's through other means uh, in the context of haptic wellness so this idea that we can use haptics to induce and improve people's well-being mm -hmm. you could maybe use robotic companions to provide some kind of tactile you know whether it's a hugging robot all these different factors mm -hmm. I, think, I think these kind of components i think could start to kick in and, and i think increasingly as we as we move into a more remote world and as we are seeing increasingly more people reporting things like loneliness reporting lack of touch in their lives i think these technologies mm -hmm. are going to become even more important you know whether you're in a relationship or not right i think it works both ways if you're in a relationship but it's a remote relationship i think mm -hmm. having access to technologies to share those types of experiences that tactile connection i think is important i think um yeah whether you're whether you you don't have that around you and you're just looking for some other form of companionship i think there's ways to help us around. be more empathic I empathic's an interesting question. I mm -hmm. think empathy is a, a difficult construct, actually, because it's, it's it, once, once you stop and think about it, there's so many layers to it, right? There's emotion recognition, there's sharing the emotion, there's thinking about the emotion. Um, but I mean, a lot of the work on touch and empathy actually connects it more to the emotional side of things. So if you see somebody upset and you feel upset, so... I guess there's a dynamic to that. So when you're saying help us be more empathic, I guess we've got to think about well, how would it help us get there and what aspect of it? I was just thinking also in terms of connection to synesthesia and your research on synesthesia. Can synesthesia teach us something about empathy and- Oh, for sure. Transferable yeah. to yeah. others so, well, who do not yeah, experience I, synesthesia. Yeah, no, it is. I, I, I would argue it already is. So, so with- the people that experience mirror touch synesthesia, so the people who feel touch when they see other people being touched, what we've shown is mm -hmm. that they activate similar parts of the brain as when they experience touch themselves. And in fact, we all do that, but they tend to overactivate this. And certain part of the reason they do this is because they have a difficulty um, in, I suppose, inhibiting other people. So we all have this ability to, we have a representation of ourselves and a representation of someone else. And let's say I see somebody in pain in that scenario to share their experience. I need to promote their experience, but inhibit my own. Right. So I know I say, well, you're in pain. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I've got to focus on you. But there's a point where I might start to get overwhelmed if I see you in pain and I'm feeling that all the time. Right. In which case I want to focus away from you and onto me. I want to mm -hmm. take the focus off you so I can calm myself. Now, People that have mirror touch synesthesia have a bit of a difficulty in that focusing away aspect to the extent that they start to literally feel the sensations of other people. There's this kind of regulation question. And mm -hmm. 
that shows us that this regulation is important to empathy. And actually what we've now shown is that training people to get better in that regulation, whether you're a synesthete or not, can impact your empathic responses to other people. Because imagine a scenario where, I don't know, I'm sharing your, your pain, but I'm getting overwhelmed by it. But I have a difficulty focusing away from you and onto myself. All that's going to happen is I'm going to share your pain so much that I get overwhelmed and I'm, I maybe won't be helpful to you anymore because I just might want to just withdraw. So in that scenario, we need to train people in that self-other behavior. And that's something that we have been doing. And we've particularly been doing that in professions whereby maybe sometimes too much empathy can lead to burnout. So sometimes in healthcare professions, it can mm -hmm. be overwhelming. And so we've been working in those spaces based on what we've learned from synesthesia to think about how can we do some, some approaches that can help people regulate their empathy and have more, should we say, motivated empathy in their daily lives. Impressive. This is a very interesting angle to actually think about it, the regulation, right? Because if you become overwhelmed, you can't help anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing.